Kris Jenner's younger sister died unexpectedly March 18th at the age of 65. My mom ain't here. My mama was sacrificed. Me too. You understand? Yeah, I appreciate it. Michael you. Jordan, what about him? His dad, right? Bill Cosby, his son, right? Dr. Dre, his son. You know, out in Hollywood, a lot of people come up missing. Feels like it might be a lot of that in order to control, traumatize. They want to monetize and traumatize. I just think it's a little shady that we're finding out about your sister and death, Miss Chris. And it honestly makes it a little sus. It feels like your sister did not like how you came up in the industry. She did not like you for it. And what if she was trying to reveal some shit? There's a lot of stuff coming out right now. What if she was trying to make some extra money and expose you and your family? For the frauds and scammers that you are, and you got rid of her before she could. I am on to you, Chris Jenner. In today's whirlwind of Kardashian chaos, the spotlight seems to be fixated on none other than the matriarch herself, Chris Jenner. With fingers pointing at the Kardashians' alleged shady dealings with Diddy, the rumor mill is churning out some wild tales, including one that suggests Chris may have gone as far as sacrificing her own sister, Karen Houghton, to maintain their grip on fame. It's been just over a month since Karen's passing, but now, with the Kardashian clan's connections to serious allegations swirling around Diddy, every detail of her death is being scrutinized. And let's be honest, with the Kardashians, anything seems possible, because when she died, the actual reason of death remained a mystery for two weeks. And then they claimed it was a cardiac arrest. Remember the time when Jaguar Wright exposed that Kardashians have some sort of poison which causes cardiac arrest? There's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. As people connect the dots, it's hard to ignore the suspicion that Kris Jenner may have orchestrated her sister's demise. Why would Kris stoop to such depths, you ask? Well, it's simple. She craves the spotlight like a plant craves sunlight. Kris needs those news banners blazing with the Kardashian name, and she'll stop at nothing to ensure it. After all, there's a new season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians on the horizon, and Kris knows that hype equals ratings. But what about family loyalty, you wonder? Ha, to Kris, family is just another pawn on the board of fame and fortune. Karen wasn't as famous or as wealthy as Chris, so why should she care? In Chris's world, love is reserved for those with deep pockets, and she's willing to sacrifice anyone, yes, even her own flesh and blood to keep the cash flowing and the cameras rolling. Chris Jenner is the queen of pulling off the unthinkable. Remember when she casually used her church for a little thing called tax evasion? Yep, you heard that right. While most people might stick to the straight and narrow, Chris sees loopholes as opportunities. Who needs to pay taxes when you've got Chris Jenner's resourcefulness on your side. It seems like Kris Jenner's troubles are piling up faster than ever. In a shocking turn of events, the IRS is reportedly slamming Kris over allegations of tax evasion through her California community church. This could have serious consequences for Kris and everyone associated with her. The IRS claims that Kris has been attempting to evade taxes, not just for herself, but also for her children, by hiding a substantial amount of money under the guise of the church. If these allegations hold true, it could mean trouble not only for Kris, but for her entire family as well. The potential repercussions are massive. The IRS has the power to seal Chris's bank accounts and properties, which could deal a devastating blow to her finances and reputation. And if criminal charges are brought against her, it could mean jail time for Chris and those involved. As the investigation unfolds, one thing's for certain. Chris Jenner's life is about to get a whole lot more complicated. Stay tuned because this could be the beginning of the end for the Kardashian matriarch. Chris founded the California Community Church in 2009. It was previously known as the Life Change Church, and its lead pastor is Brad Johnson. He is a family friend of the Kardashians, and KUWTK viewers might remember him for officiating Khloe Kardashian and Lamar Odom's wedding. Some may see it as a shock that Chris founded her own church. However, the family has a long-standing association with religion and is regularly seen on their shows making prayers, and they also make posts about it on their social media too. The main issue a lot of people seem to have with Chris having her own church is that there has been some speculation over the years over the authenticity of her having a church. The main concern of this 
is if Chris decided to found her own church so that she could use it as a tax write-off. Within the church, there is a practice that is known as tithing, which is where it is customary to give 10% of one's earnings back to the church. This set a lot of tongues wagging regarding Chris because it's widely known that she takes 10% of all of her children's earnings, and many found this far too much of a coincidence to believe that there was nothing fishy behind her founding her own church. This may not seem like anything that anyone necessarily needs to be skeptical about at this point, particularly as many managers will often take somewhere around 10% of their clients' earnings. However, it was reported by Radar Online that the California Community Church was involved in a tax scandal after it failed to pay any taxes during its first few years. Chris Church not paying any taxes might confuse some as to why this was a tax scandal, as it's also widely known that churches are exempt from paying federal, state, and local taxes. However, they do have to pay taxes on their payroll expenses, which seems to be what Chris failed to do in this instance. Doesn't sound like something a business-savvy woman like Chris would do. There are some other issues regarding money and Chris's church that also come into play here, one of which is that there have been a few occasions where the Kardashians have been involved in some charity auctions on eBay and have given the money made from these sales to the California Community Church, which would get them out of having to pay any tax on that money. The other issue is the membership fee that the church charges. Many churches will vary what they charge for their churchgoers. Some will charge a mandatory fee. Some will ask that members pay 10% of their earnings but won't make this mandatory, and others will ask for a small contribution whenever someone attends their church. However, the California Community Church charges $1,000 per month in order to be able to attend their church, so it certainly seems like something that is more for the rich and wealthy. But overlooking that, it would also seem that this membership fee gives Chris even more money than what she currently makes, which many aren't happy about. The whole situation appears to be quite suspicious, and it certainly comes across as shady as F. But it still doesn't end there because a lot of things still don't add up about Kim's finances, and people are convinced that she has been inflating her income and network. Listen, these thieves' pockets have holes in them, and this is the kind of shadiness that is nothing new to the Kardashians, because we all remember how Kylie was exposed by Forbes for lying about how much her Kylie Cosmetics brand was worth, and she ended up losing her billionaire status. Well, Kim is still officially known noted as a billionaire, but people think that she doesn't act like it. Last year, she was investigated by the SEC after she advertised the cryptocurrency Ethereum Max without adding a disclaimer to show that it was a sponsored ad and she had gotten paid to do so. By advertising without stating that it was an ad, she had taken part in a pump and dump scheme that was aimed at increasing the price of cryptocurrency before it was sold to investors, and she was fined $1.26 million. People have pointed out how weird it is that Kim would still be running ads on Instagram, even as a billionaire, because that is certainly not billionaire behavior. It's giving more Instagram influencer rather than billionaire businesswoman. And this is another reason people think that low key, she isn't as rich as she wants us to think. And according to Kanye, people are right about that. While Kim is definitely far from the opera girl, she has way less money than people think. And this is why Kanye was always careful to keep his money separate from hers, even when their marriage was still going well. He never wanted to get financially tied up with her because he knew that he would be losing a lot of money at the end of the day. A source spoke to People Magazine and said they keep their accounts basically separate. See back in the day, before Kim was famous, she worked as a closet assistant for singer Brandy, but Kim did her dirty because she stole from Brandy. As the closet assistant, Kim had access to Brandy's credit card for a one-time. However, after Kim stopped working for Brandy, she along with Chloe and Rob took advantage of the access and stole $120,000 from Brandy's mother. What this means is that Kim held onto the credit card details for years and waited until she believed enough time passed before carrying out the thievery. But to make matters worse, they tried to be sneaky and hide the paper trail by spending the stolen money at their stores, Dash and Smooch, instead of using it directly. To avoid suspicion, they used the stolen money to make it seem like legitimate income from their clothing stores, because they thought it would be harder to trade since Brandy buys a lot of clothes. However, they were caught red-handed. At first, Brandy's mother gave gave Kim the opportunity to return the money without involving the law because of her relationship with Brandy and Ray J. But when she didn't repay the money for over a year, she decided to take legal action against them. But then Brandy and Ray J convinced their mother to withdraw the lawsuit and resolve the matter outside of the courts. According to Ray J, this was the actual reason behind his breakup with Kim. But that wasn't the last time that Kim was involved in such money shenanigans because she was also linked to a money laundering scheme. Before her rise to fame, she had a sugar 
daddy named Joe Lowe, an Asian man whom she has been accused of helping launder illegal money. Insiders claim that Kim frequently traveled with Joe Lowe to gambling houses in Kazuya. And in 2009, she even claimed to have flown back to LA with a trash bag full of $250,000 cash that he won from a casino in Las Vegas. But it turns out that this might have been part of a larger money laundering scheme, as Joe Lowe has been implicated in such activities. The insider wrote, Lowe is wanted by international authorities in connection with a multi-billion dollar money laundering scheme. He is accused of being the mastermind behind a scheme to siphon $4.5 billion from the Malaysian state, run Economic Development Fund, one Malaysia development berhad. She was investigated by the FBI, but they couldn't pay anything on her. And it looks like her financial problems might have gotten only worse since her divorce from Kanye because she is in a heavy debt of $48 million, which is just insane to think about. A year ago, she took out a mortgage of $48 million on her $70 million mansion. And the crazy thing is that she can't ask her family for help because every single one of them is heavily in debt too. Her mom, Kris Jenner, has a very long list of debt and according to The Sun, she first of all took out a loan for $7.25 million in August 2018. But the following month, she was superseded by a new agreement for a whopping $40 million loan with the financial company Crosswind Venture Fund. Then in January 2019, she borrowed $5.2 million and $5.25 million in June of that year, according to Property Reports. Listen, everybody's borrowing money. Kylie also borrows $7.5 million. And long story short, the Kardashians are $132 million in debt, which is crazy. But hey, they gotta pay for their designer clothes and private jets somehow, right? Plus, their financial worries are just the latest in a long streak of what people are calling their flop era. And they might wanna level up their game very quick. And I mean quick. Oh, and... Oh, and if Kim thinks Kanye might bail her out, well, she better think again because sources report that Kanye is 100% focused on his new wife, Bianca, and has zero thoughts of regard towards Kim outside of their four kids. Why all? This is just crazy. And people have comments saying that whole family's wealth is built on shams and scams, not to talk about faking their documents to end up on rich lists and etc. More and more are seeing their lives. Not even a momager can do anything to save them from their well-deserved downfall. Prenuptial agreements save Kanye from a whole lot of grief. Smart men hope they go down hard, and they're broke broke. It's all smoke and mirrors. That's why she's trying to get North to work. Listen, the Kardashians and her family are some wild or crazy kids, but if you think that's crazy, just wait until you see the chaos in the next video.